In a world where researchers clearly needed a break from standard cheese maze dramas, they thought, let's give mice a human language gene and see if they start gossiping. Armed with CRISPR precision, they spliced in the infamous FOXP2, the so-called speech gene, as if bestowing Shakespearean eloquence upon our whiskered pals. Spoiler alert. These mice didn't exactly recite Hamlet's soliloquy. Instead, they left scientists both thrilled and thoroughly puzzled. The initial expectation, choirs of squeaks transformed into articulate rodent rhetoric, pass the cheddar, old chap. What actually happened was far subtler. The mice did tweak their vocalizations, sending out longer, chattier squeaks that sounded suspiciously like nightclub callouts. It was as though they'd taken a crash course in small talk without quite mastering the art of conversation. With fresh data in hand, scientists realized genes alone aren't a secret shortcut to eloquence. These mice hadn't acquired grammar or witty repartee, they'd just turned up their volume knob. In other words, gifting a mouse a language gene proved about as effective as handing a toddler a thesaurus and expecting a TED Talk. This comic detour underlined a bigger truth. Behavior emerges from complex neural orchestration, not just a single genetic tweak. It's like giving someone an exotic sports car without a license, they've got the hardware but not the roadmap. Our furry test subjects amused us, but they also reminded us how much we still don't understand about the interplay between genes, brains, and environment. Ultimately, the mice returned to their regular squeaky self, the lab notebooks filled with more questions than answers, and grant writers everywhere rubbed their hands in glee. We learned that installing a language chip in creatures doesn't yield instant eloquence, only more perplexed rodents. Next up on the scientific agenda, teaching goldfish to philosophize, in theory, at least.